renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Sing, cast me not away. And cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. So now one last time, create in me. Create in me a clean heart, O Renew a right spirit within me. Sing, cast me not away. And cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me so that one more time cast me not away and cast me not away from thy presence oh lord take not thy holy spirit from me restore The joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Hmm, all right, it's time for school, time to log into Zoom. Okay, um, okay, I'm logged in. Oh, wait, I forgot to do quiet time. Eh, I'll do it after Zoom school. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, okay, oh, hi, teacher. Uh, what's five plus five? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Someone else can answer the question. Oh, finally, online school is over. I'm so tired. And I'm so hungry. Oh, there's food. <laughs> well, it's not Duke Nuts, but I love cereal. Oh, oh, man. I said I was going to do quiet time after I, after I school, but... I'm so hungry right now. I'll do quiet time after I eat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Wait a minute. I said I was going to do my quiet time after eating, but I have to exercise too. I'll do it right after I exercise. Okay, let's get back. Oh, oh, mile 15. <laughs> oh, it's been such a long day. I'll make sure my night light's on. Okay, night light's on. Oh, and it's time to go to bed. Oh, I forgot to do my quiet time. Oh, I, I said I was going to do it this entire day, but eh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Oh, good night, everyone. <laughs> All right, Sunday School, welcome to another Sunday worship. Um, I'm so excited to have you guys here today. And as you can see, I'm actually um, in one of the old Sunday School rooms, one of the rooms you guys used to use. In fact, let me just show you guys around a little bit. Um, apparently, this used to be the... Uh, wait, let's do this. This used to be the, uh, the third grade room. So I see um, a bunch of stuff over here. And I see the third grade chart and whatnot. So I hope that brings back some memories for you guys. And 
Um, yeah, we, I just want to say we miss you so much. Let me set this over here again. Yeah, we just, uh, we miss you so much and we can't wait to have you guys back here um, at church. But until that day comes, I hope you guys endure. Um, keep showing up for these um, YouTube worships because it's worship nonetheless. Um, let, and let's keep praying together um, as a church, as a Sunday school, that um, COVID would be over so that we can all worship God together physically, physically next to each other. Um, so let's keep praying for that and keep praying for you know, God to heal our land. And with that, we're actually going to say a word of prayer before we enter into today's word. So let's pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for gathering us here today. I thank you for another opportunity to just receive your word, to hear your word, Lord God, through the book of Matthew. I pray, Lord Jesus, that our ears, that our hearts would be open and that we may just receive your word today. I also just want to lift up our church to you, Lord God, in the midst of COVID and in the midst of just so many different circumstances, Lord God. I pray that your hand would be upon us, Lord God, that your hand would be up upon our leadership, upon Moksanim Samonim, um, upon just all the teachers and, um, and whatnot, Lord. And I just pray that um, we, this church would just be the light and salt in the midst of um, just so much darkness, Lord. So we thank you. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed that skit with Ned. Um, and I'll tie that into my message a little bit later. But for now, um, I want to read today's passage for us, okay? So it's going to be Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 23. It's just two short verses, but in it, I, I think there's a lot that um, we can really learn that the Spirit will speak to us through these um, two verses. And so please follow along as I read it for us. As always, it'll show up somewhere, maybe over here and um, whatnot. So um, please follow along as I read the word of the Lord. Verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Amen. And now what we have in today's passage is Jesus is in the mountain by himself. Okay? But I think before we even get to why Jesus is by himself and why Jesus sends his disciples to the other side and disperses the crowd, we have to kind of follow along the story until now. So we're going to backtrack a little bit um, to chapter 13. So we're going to go back in time. Okay? So what actually happens is in the book of Matthew and as, we, as we've been following the life and just the story of Jesus, um, in chapter 13, something very significant happens. So I'm sure we all know of John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, okay, who was someone who proclaimed the message of repentance and he told everyone, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is near. And he, in fact, he was, um, you know, in close relation with Jesus. And in chapter 13, what actually happens is we read about John the Baptist um, and how he was executed. He was actually killed by King Herod, which was very, very unfortunate. Um, John the Baptist was telling King Herod that his ways were wicked, that his ways were sinful. And so he was telling King Herod, King Herod, repent, um, you know, repent, turn away for your, from your sins. But King Herod ends up not listening, and long story short, King Herod ends up killing John the Baptist. And so upon hearing this message, upon hearing this news, um, it says that Jesus went up onto the mountainside to pray. So he took a boat, he went to this desolate area, meaning just a quiet, um, quiet area all by himself. But what actually happens is, so Jesus goes to a quiet place to pray. But it turns out that the people, the crowd, um, by this time he's quite famous, a lot of people heard that Jesus would go, was going to this place to pray. And so when Jesus gets onto this boat and tries to go up to the mountaintop to pray, a crowd had gathered, gathered a large crowd had gathered, ga had gathered. And it says that Jesus, instead of turning away and being annoyed and saying, oh, you know, I need my alone time, you know, John the Baptist has just passed away. I'm so, you know, I need to pray and I'm mourning and I'm sad. Instead of turning away the people, it says 
that Jesus had compassion on the people. And so he has compassion on them and he begins to preach to them, to teach them and heal all of their sick. And this is when we actually have that famous, famous miracle in which Jesus feeds the 5,000. And we know it's more than just 5,000 men because it was also women and children. So it was only 5,000 men, but there were also women and children. So it might have been anywhere from 5,000 people to even maybe 10,000 people that Jesus fed with the miracle of um, the two fish and five pieces of bread. And then after he does this miracle, after he you know, preaches, after he heals them, and after he, um, after he feeds them physically, that's when we reach our passage today, which I want to read for us once again. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So he's dismissing the crowds that, that had once again gathered to see him. So after he's healed them, after he's ministered to them, now he's dispersing them and saying, okay, now it's time, you know, I, I've done ministry and it's now time for you guys to move on. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. And so Jesus, after telling the disciples, you know, to go to the other side and after dismissing the crowds, he himself goes up to the mountain by himself to pray. And so there's something that we need to understand. When, so Jesus is going up to the mountaintop because he's heard the news about John the Baptist, which is really sad news. And so what does he do? He goes up to the mountain to pray to spend that alone time with the Lord. And yes, Jesus was busy. And like I, like I just told you, the crowd, large crowds had gathered and just he was probably teaching them for hours and hours and hours. And we know from the life of Jesus from morning to night, he barely even had time to eat. He was such, such a busy person. And yet he made time. In fact, this time was so valuable and so pressed for him where he finally says, okay, crowd, you guys have to go now. Disciples, you guys have to go now. I need to spend time with my father. I need to spend time with my God. And so that's why we see Jesus on top of this mountain alone, because he's going to spend time with the father. He's going to spend time with the father God. And he was probably praying, probably talking to God and just letting his heart out before God and gaining his strength from the Lord. And so that's the message that I want to bring to us today. You know, we saw a skit today and, you know, Ned was doing all sorts of things. He was eating food. He was doing Zoom and he was even exercising and whatnot. And after every moment, yes, Ned had a really busy day, but, you know, he didn't make time for quiet time. Even though his day was busy, there were moments where he could have done quiet time, but he kept pushing it off and saying, ah, no, later, ah, no, later, I, I don't have time for quiet time because I'm so busy. And finally, he ends up going to sleep without having done his quiet time, without having spent any time with the Lord because he was so busy. And yet when we look at the life of Jesus, no matter how busy he got, I mean, he fed 10,000 people. He was healing and touching and teaching 10,000 people yet he still made sure that he had time to spend time with God. Made sure no matter how late it was, he spent time with the Lord. And so in the same way that Jesus made time with God and made sure to do his quiet time, made sure to you know, pray and made sure to be in the presence of God, that's exactly what we need to do. As the sons and daughters of God, as children of God, we can't see prayer time. We should not see prayer time. We should not see quiet time. We should not see worship time as an interruption to our, our day. We should not see it as something where we have to do or, you know, it's something that's kind of taking time out of our day to do, but it's something that we should desire to do. It's something that gives us life. It's something that we should, you know, really just yearn for and just have great joy when we pray and when we do quiet time and when we worship. Why? Because we're spending time with the Father God. We're spending time with Jesus. We're spending time with the Holy Spirit. And that for us, that should be the reason why we're living. And that should be the source of our greatest strength. And so Sunday School, I want to encourage you guys today, if you guys have found quiet times hard to do, 
If you guys have found prayer hard to do, just realign, readjust your hearts and remember just how precious and what a gift prayer is, what a gift quiet time is, and what a gift worship is. Because without it, a Christian cannot live, a Christian cannot survive. And Jesus shows that to us. The reason why Jesus prayed, the reason why Jesus did all those things was to set an example for us. He prayed to show us we must pray. He spent quiet time with the Lord because he's showing we need to spend quiet time with the Lord no matter how busy we get. Alright? So I want you guys to just remember and hold on to that point. We must spend time with Jesus every single day no matter how busy we get. And maybe you guys aren't so busy on Sunday school now, but as you guys get older, when you guys go into junior high, when you guys go into high school and college, and maybe when you guys become parents, things will just get busier and busier and busier and your schedules get more, will get more hectic. But please hold on to today's message. You need to spend time with the Lord every single day. And so the application and my challenge to you for this week, make sure you do quiet time every single day. Let's say your school just gives you so much homework and you have art classes and you have music classes and you, you're just so busy then I want you to at least pick up the Bible, at least open up to that day's quiet time, and I want you to at least read it. You know, it doesn't take a long time to read. At least read the quiet time every single day, not just once, but at least three times, three to five times. And if you do so, at least you're eating some of the Word of God. Secondly, the second thing I want to encourage you guys to do is make sure you're praying every single day, not only reading God's Word, and doing quiet time, but make sure you're praying every single day, spending time with our Father God as His children. Because, you know, that's what relationship is all about. You know, it's about talking with people. It's about spending time together, right? If I love, you know, let's say, you know, I work with Pastor Sung and I work with Pastor David at church, and because if I love them, I'm going to spend time with them, right? And for you guys too, um, you guys ha might have people you love in your lives. Maybe you love your moms and your dads. Maybe you love your brothers and your sisters. Maybe you love your friends. And because you love your friends, you want to spend time with them, right? It's the same thing with God. And when you pray with God, and when you do quiet time, you're just spending time with someone that you love, with the God that you love, and ultimately a God that first loved you. And so I encourage you to pray every single day. And to join all of the church at 1124 a.m. Because that's when we're all praying together. Join us in that time of prayer and let's all spend time with our Father God, with Jesus at that time. And really lift up our prayers, lift up our thanksgiving, and lift up our praises to Him. Alright? And before um, we close, I just want to end us with a word of prayer. So once again, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Jesus, once again, we thank you for the message. We thank you for teaching us through the book of Matthew and through your life, Jesus, through the life that you lived on this earth as a man. Jesus, thank you for reminding us that we are to, no matter how busy we get, spend every day with you, spend time with you every single day. So help us to make determinations and not to see it as a chore, not to see it as work, but to see it as a very precious time, simply as a time where we're spending time with the God that loved us and the God that we love. So Jesus, please plant that deeply into our hearts and may it just bear so much good fruit. We thank you, we love you, in your name we pray, amen. All right, until next time, see you later, Sunday School. All right, Sunday School, so that brings our worship service today to a close. We really miss you. We're praying for you. We hope to see you here at church very, very soon. Just like Pastor Josh said, you know, we can't wait to be able to worship together with you in person. Um, so, you know, hang in there. You know, we're going to keep uh, making these videos so that you can worship online together with us. Take today's word to heart. Let's really um, continue to put a smile on God's face. Let's continue to do quiet time. Let's continue to pray at 1124. And you know what, Sunday School? Um, yeah, just, just really miss all of you. So with that, let's all bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and let's end in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, see you next week, Sunday School. Bye! Thank you.